monde et merci Wisher. My name is Alex Stephanie. As you just heard, I'm CEO of a company called Just Park. And uh, I'm also author of the newest book on the sharing economy, which is called The Business of Sharing. And we're going to talk to you in about, for about 10 minutes about one of the ideas that I introduce in my book. And it's called The Goldilocks Complex. Just to give a little more context, I have a rather hectic life because I'm really wearing two hats at once. And the first is running this company, which is a sort of eight days a week type role. We believe that parking is one of the most dysfunctional aspects of city life. But we're not petrol heads, we're really efficiency geeks. And we think there's quite an elegant solution to the mess that is parking. And that is to use the space that we already have so Just Park is a platform that lets anyone with a parking space rent it out and make money from that space. And that means families, that means individuals. There are more than 20,000 of them making money every year on the platform. It means churches. There are churches that have made 150,000 pounds, 200,000 pounds. It's money that goes back into the community. It's also hotels, it's car parks, it's anyone with a space. And that means that space is used efficiently, and it means that journeys are efficient, because a car can go directly to its parking space. It doesn't cause traffic, it doesn't cause pollution as it drives around. And the data that we've looked at suggests that about a fifth of all the traffic and all the car pollution in a city is caused by people driving around. That's crazy. And the other hat that I've been wearing is as an author, so about 18 months ago now, a big publisher, Macmillan, came to me and they wanted me to write a book about the sharing economy. And they said, okay, we know there have been books written on this topic before, but we want to write, we want a book that is really written from the perspective of an entrepreneur. We want to know what it is like to run one of these companies, what it is like to speak to politicians about barriers in regulation, what it's like to raise money from venture capitalists. So I set out and I've written um, a very colorful book. It's a book that really allows the readers to sort of sit on my shoulder as I'm running this company and raising money and dealing with all the things that come at you. And I was very lucky to interview some amazing entrepreneurs. So the founders of businesses that you'll all know, like Blah Blah Car and Airbnb and Zipcar, um, and a bunch of other very interesting people. So that really took me around the world and And as I say, one of the ideas that I talk about in this book is something called the Goldilocks Complex. So now, it's pretty good that everyone's kind of sat on cushions because we're going to have story time. Just imagine you're four years old. So I'm sure the French among you will also know this story. En français, c'est boucle d'or et les trois ours. Do you know this? Yes, okay. Everyone's sort of thinking about like drinking milk when they're four years old and when adults were really huge. So I'm going to just tell this story very quickly, like in a bridge version, so everyone is up to speed if you don't know this story. The story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a little girl named Goldilocks. She went for a walk in the forest. Pretty soon, she came upon a house. She knocked, and when no one answered, she walked in. At the table in the kitchen, there were three bowls of porridge. Goldilocks was hungry. She tasted the porridge from the first bowl. This porridge is too hot, she exclaimed. So she tasted the porridge from the second bowl. This porridge is too cold. So she tasted the last bowl of porridge. Ah, this porridge is just right, she said, and she ate it all up. So then she messes around with their chairs, as you know, she breaks the chair, and then she's feeling very tired. So she thinks, right, I'm going to have a, have a sleep. So she tiptoes upstairs, she goes into the bedrooms, 
and she tries out the beds. She lies down in the first bed, but it's too hard. Then she lies down in the second bed, but it's too soft. So then she lays down in the third bed, and it was perfect. And Goldilocks fell asleep. She was sleeping, and then we know what happens next. What happens next? The three bears come home. Trouble's brewing. Someone's been eating my porridge, growled the papa bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the mama bear. Someone's been eating my porridge, and they ate it all up, said the baby bear. And then the bears go upstairs. Someone's been in my bed, growled the papa bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, said the mama bear. Someone's been sleeping in my bed too, exclaimed the baby bear. And then Goldilocks woke up and saw the three bears. She screamed, "Help!" And she jumped out and ran out of the room. She opened the door and she ran into the forest. And she never returned to the home of the three bears. It's kind of like the ultimate Airbnb screw-up, I think. This story. It's a cottage in the middle of nowhere, disconnected from everything. Goldilocks comes in. She's this really, really demanding consumer. She wants her bed to be comfortable. She wants her porridge to be the right temperature. She wants her chair to be just right. And the bears don't get it. There's this terrible disconnect. For them, this world is about looking after themselves, looking after their family. And so they go upstairs and they see her in their bed, and it's this ultimate invasion of privacy. It's this ultimate taboo, this private space, and the bears are confused, and they're angry. And for a lot of human history, we've really been like this. We've been happy to share things with those immediately around us, but when it comes to sharing things with people we don't know, it's it's been far more problematic. And the Goldilocks complex is really possessive ownership. It's this is mine. The Goldilocks complex is don't touch my stuff. This is private. Now, a lot of smart people throughout history have known that this is kind of irrational. Actually, it makes sense for people to share your bed if it's efficient. If it makes them happy, if it makes you happy, it doesn't bring you happiness to have this attitude that no one can share your bed. And so, lots of smart people in history have said stuff. This is a Roman consul. He's called Boethius. He was imprisoned, and he says, "Man cannot find his good in worldly possessions. Riches bring anxiety and trouble." About a thousand years later. We have this guy. He's an English philosopher called Bertrand Russell, and he says something pretty similar. It is the preoccupation with possessions, more than anything else, that prevents us from living freely and nobly. Now, what do these two guys have in common? Well, I think the most obvious thing they have in common is that though they lived about a thousand years apart. They're both very rich, they're both white, and they're both aristocrats. Now it's kind of easy when you come from that background of privilege to say that possessions aren't that important because you've got a lot of them. But the world's changing. So this woman, she runs a company called Sunrun that lets people access solar panels and rent solar panels. And Lynn Jurek says the new status symbol isn't what you own; it's what you're smart enough not to own. And so, really, what's happening now is that, whereas once only the privileged took this flighty view to possessions, now it is coming mainstream. Now the Goldilocks complex is fading away for the plebeians. And why is this? Well, we know because it actually is easy. It improves our lives to not own these things. It is not a philosophical 
argument, it is a practical argument. And people are accessing transportation, people are accessing employment, people are accessing food through all of these different sharing or collaborative economy startups. And so really, this is the shift that we're seeing now. Before the internet, people are taking care of themselves and those immediately close to them. This is Goldilocks for survival. This is get out my bed. This is don't eat my porridge. But now what we're seeing is that these clans are growing bigger. And that is happening through a process of selection and extension. On Airbnb, the three bears today, they don't just let anyone eat their porridge. They don't just let anyone sleep in their bed. They choose people that they think will fit into their clans. And then their clans grow, and their networks grow. And that's really a difference between a business like Uber and one like Blah Blah Car. Almost any driver is going to take you in an Uber, but only certain drivers are going to take you in a Blah Blah Car because they're going to look for that fit with their clan. And so now we're seeing that clans are growing. Everyone in this room is part of a clan that is growing. It's part of many intersecting clans that are growing. And they're growing on the basis of you saying to yourself, I don't mind that person eating my porridge, and I don't mind that person sharing my bed. And as this happens and continues to happen, the Goldilocks complex of possessive ownership is going to dissolve away. And I believe time will tell that that will be a very beautiful thing indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex.